Now, despite dropping 11 whole songs since his self-proclaimed conclusion of his beef with Kendrick Lamar, for some reason, Drake is still trying to run around and clear his name of any of the harm and damage that has been done to him this summer, and just after releasing three new solo songs that just finished their first week of official tracking, which based on where those songs charted on the Billboard Hot 100, we can already see that the hype for new Drake music has never been lower. And now, despite all of the signals telling Drake to just lay down and sit back for a while, this has not stopped him from releasing more music as he has given us another three pack of songs. And now with this collection of tracks, one of the cuts is the official release of the Super Soak leak that Kai Sanat previewed, which is now titled SOD. And while Drake has put out this track that has been sitting in his vault for a while, what's interesting to note is that Lil Yachty is no longer on it. But now in addition to this, Instead of having someone like 21 Savage take a hit for him and diss Kendrick Lamar like we saw on his last release of music as the leading artist with his track It's Up, Drake has finally decided to speak directly to Kendrick Lamar. And everything that has happened in their beef for the first time with his new track No Face, which happens to feature Playboy Cardi and now with this cut. What's interesting is that based on Drake's lyrics, this is the first song he has released in months that was definitively recorded after his beef with Kendrick Lamar and that is actually trying to address everything that went down in a way that is somewhat direct in order to finally move on. And after trying to distract people from what happened for so long, I mean I guess this is worth something. But now when it comes to delivering on opening up about the most important rap beef of the entire century and trying to spin the narratives masterfully crafted against you by Kendrick right back on him, this is a much more challenging task, and when it comes to how Drake responded to all this here, on a song that just from its musicality and atmosphere, has much darker production than he has been on recently, and has vocals from him that sound a little more lively than the near robotic performances he has been phoning in on a lot of what we have heard this summer, Drake has set the stakes higher from the absolutely incredibly low bar he has been at. But now when it comes to actually making a good moment for the first time in months, Things got a lot more complicated as Drake's response to Kendrick Lamar and everything that went down is a lot more interesting. And now to initially set the scene on the first verse of this track, Drake starts to let us into his actual headspace for a change and instead of just trying to gaslight listeners and act like nothing happened in his career recently, right off the bat he is at least acknowledging the tensions that have been lingering around and calls out Kendrick Lamar and also a lot of other people he is beefing with like Future and Metro Boomin as he says. I gotta know, I gotta know, how you get lit off the person you hated on. And now off rip, this is a clear dig at Kendrick and a diss track that is designed to be a banger and not like us, as Drake is trying to flip things and say that Kendrick is the weird one for making an anthem about the guy he hates. And then following this up, Drake questions the legitimacy of the success and numbers Kendrick has pulled off with his diss tracks and especially not like us as he says, numbers untouchable, they got the data wrong. And this seems like Drake is trying to accuse Kendrick of using bots to stream Not Like Us and run up its numbers to become the most streamed diss track of all time, which was an allegation that was thrown Kendrick's way following the beef and then trying to make himself sound bigger than all of this conflict. Drake says, This is the moment I know they've been praying on, trying on the boy, but F it, I'm staying on. And then now in the rest of this verse, everything Drake says following here is pretty much just flattering himself and hyping up the fact that he is about to do something insane, which after almost 15 tracks following this beef, it is kind of hard to believe that Drake would still be saying this and trying to create hype instead of just actually doing it. But now later in this track, on the second verse, Drake gets a lot more personal as he goes into more depth about what is going on in this moment in his career and life as he says, Cause I keep on talking about beefing and business and money and women. It's no diagnosis they emptied the clip. And with these lines, Drake is pretty much acknowledging what happened. It is saying that Kendrick, Future, Metro Boomin, and everyone else who came at him went all out with everything they had and tried to destroy him. And while this may seem like an admission of defeat initially, Drake quickly switches things up here as he says, Quick switch that out and I came back reloaded. I'm just so happy that people who envied and held that stuff in got to finally showing. I'm over the moon, yeah, we'll see you boys soon. I'm spreading my wings, I hop out cocoon. I'm studio trapping, I'm locked in the room. And now with this, these are the biggest disses on the entire track, as Drake is trying to diminish what Kendrick Lamar especially pulled off as he tries to make their rivalry seem like this one-sided hatred on Kendrick's end and again. By acting like he's happy that people who don't like him have found success by musically attacking him, Drake is trying to make himself sound like he is bigger than all of this, but as in the end of the verse, 
he is clearly alluding to the fact that he is not done with this situation and something will be coming to settle the score and get revenge. He kind of contradicts his emotions, but regardless. What is definitive here is that Drake is using this track as a warning shot to all the rappers who went against him, but especially Kendrick Lamar, and now with all of this. While if this was the first song Drake released since the end of the beef, or a prelude or teaser to something actually coming, it may have been a decent move, but at this point, as Drake has pretty much given us an album's worth of features and singles this summer that have all had little to no impact on the entire landscape of music, which is a first in his career. I think in this overblown vanity track, where he is clearly trying to reignite a beef with guys who clearly beat him, I think the question we all have to ask is why is Drake still sitting here and hyping up what he is going to do instead of just actually going out and doing it? I mean, for all intents and purposes, the clock has expired for Drake, and he is being pushed further and further out of anyone's good graces with every day that passes. So with all this controversy and scrutiny that he's been facing, and on top of all the damage from the battle with Kendrick, because of all the bad songs he has given us this summer, which has created a narrative that Drake has lost his touch and is never going to get it back. Why is he doing nothing but just pretending that he is plotting? Because while this song isn't necessarily bad, this or any of the other Drake songs are not going to send waves into the music industry like any other Drake singles just months before this would. And as we hear another track from Drake that is showing us after all he said and all the reports about how he was unfazed about this entire beef and controversy that was surrounding him, that he really is still fixated on what happened and is plotting his revenge and as the lyrics reveal, it's all that's on his mind. He is just making himself look more pathetic because he is running around without any sort of identity and has now dropped all ounces of integrity and purpose out the window and is going to throw out anything out the wall until it sticks, becomes a hit, or just helps fix his reputation a little bit. But now overall with this new song and this entire new drop, as people are caring less and less about Drake's new music in general, and the only real part of this three-pack that is getting attention is the song No Face because Drake is trying to stir the pot with everyone who shook his entire legacy. As the best disses Drake threw out here were about how his rivals are obsessed with him and that they should be scared because he is going to return and get revenge, which is all just so vague. And then knowing that last time Drake did try to go head on with Kendrick, he made himself the laughing stock of the music industry as he made one of the worst diss tracks of all time in the hard part six. All in all, right now, while this song is stirring up all the beef that went down between Drake and the music world just because he is poking the people who attacked him and is trying to make them fear the fact that according to him, He's never been better and never been more ready to get revenge. As every single other thing about Drake from his destroyed reputation, deflated streaming numbers, and flopping songs are telling us otherwise. All of this is just coming a little too late, and as Kendrick Lamar was allegedly unfazed when he heard Family Matters, I'd imagine that when he hears this, if he ever does, he will just be laughing harder than ever about it. So now with all this said, let me know your thoughts on Drake's new diss track towards Kendrick Lamar, and do you think these disses do anything to help Drake save his reputation in the rap game and prepare for a possible round two in this beef? I can't wait to hear what you have to say, and if you want to see how Drake's friend Lil Yachty has never been worse, as he is destroying everything he has ever worked for, check out the suggested video.